Welcome to SciTech Culture with Steve Kern and Ben Warner, where we examine science, technology, and culture in the 21st century. Visit our website at scitechculture.com. Hello and welcome to SciTech Culture. My name is Ben Warner and I'm joined once again by my good friend and colleague Steve Kern. How are we today, Steve? We haven't covered pets in any great detail, but we are about to, so um, it's exciting well, stuff. We should have. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it's taken us that long. I mean, you know, pets are people too. Yeah, that's right. So um, <laughs> we're going to start this conversation around a, um, well, I'd call it an unscientific study based on what I read, but it's still an interesting <laughs> point of discussion, which is to say that um, uh, researchers at the University of York reported um, dogs responded better to what they called dog-directed speech um, <laughs> as opposed to if we spoke to them as if they were people. Now, obviously, they didn't go into any great detail and it's probably all could be a bit of, you know, a bit of, uh, you know, um, flamboyant uh, rhetoric or whatever. But the idea is the, uh, you know, the classic high-pitched um, sort of uh, baby voice and dog-relevant phrases that you'd, uh, you'd get or hear around the place is something that uh, dogs tend to re- respond um, to better than if you just, you know, sort of uh, chatted to them like there's somebody else in the room. What I, um, I, the thing is, is that from what I can tell, as far as the way dogs interpret things, is that um, it, they they are able to um, compared to other animals distinctly um, differentiate between different types of sounds and actually quite a number of sounds. But they're yeah. sounds. So if um, what they what these people are saying is not necessarily what you're saying, it's what, how you're saying it and the uh, the tone that you're saying it in. Um, and I can understand that that might have some relevance um, to the discussion with this because um, uh, dogs might have, say, for instance, be able to differentiate between a hundred different types of tones and associate that with certain commands mm. or cert- certain actions or whatever. As far as I can see. Yeah, well, it, it's an interesting thing. I think, you know, obviously dogs, you know, have excellent hearing and, and they can hear when you're talking to them and all animals can, all mm. pets. I mean, even even some farm animals, the way, you know, you call cattle in to feed or whatever, they, you know, or pigs and it doesn't matter whether it's dogs, even cats, you know, birds, they, they, they can hear in your voice, uh, you know, when you're talking to them. Mm. The thing that I find interesting about this study and, and I think might be overlooked, although I don't know enough about uh, canine uh, brain anatomy, but when people talk in a funny voice to their dogs, they also would change their facial expression and their mannerisms to make those sounds and they're looking directly at the dog, they're not ordering the dog, they're just talking to the dog. And um, if the dog's got enough uh, forebrain, uh, it may well be able to read emotions. I think we think that dogs can anyway. And uh, what it realises is that you're actually reaching out to it and in the dog's mind, you know, actually speaking the dog's language. So it's quite interesting. And that was uh, another point I was going to raise is how much of this is body language and emotion as opposed to Mm. um, actual commands because, um, yeah, dogs can um, read the emotional sort of vibe that you send them and, uh, you know, there's always those jokes about how dogs um, are a lot like people in terms of uh, (laughs) their characters and the way they behave and or, um, you know, the old stereotype of um, a dog literally having the same body language and mannerisms as its own. You know, as, yes, it's, as they're yeah. walking down the street and all that sort of thing, um, and it's uh, and it's a fascinating thing. I mean, dogs in particular are um, uh, the the connection with humans has always been something I've found um, rather interesting. Um, that they just are born with that natural instinct, um, you know, to be uh, you know sort of to hang around us and be friendly with us. Um, if that uh, if that makes sense. Well, as they say, dogs. Uh, people too, especially these days, and I think that that's part of it. And it's, it was quite interesting. There was a study a number of years back where they uh, looked at domestic dogs, and of course, you know, a bark in the wild actually means something. You know, it means it's my food, stay away, or it's calling out. You know, is there anyone out there? Or it's saying danger, or it, it could be. You know, I'm here to fight. Whatever it would be, but they actually analysed wild dog uh, barks and noises. And then they uh, basically uh, listened to normal dogs in a domestic urban environment and the conclusion the researchers came up with where the dogs were actually saying, yap, 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 
as in I'm here, hello, here, mm. but being really confused in what they were saying. Right. So they weren't they weren't calling properly, and and that's because obviously in a domestic sense, the dogs don't actually get much of a chance to talk by barking and calling out to other dogs. So I would think, therefore, that their primary means of communication is is with their owner, with with their family, and uh, they would very rapidly learn, uh, you know, uh, when an owner's ordering them to do something, when an owner's just talking and, and, and you know, spending some time and, and giving them some attention. So it's pretty cool, really. That's an interesting uh, idea, actually, um, whether um, uh, it would be in, uh, worthwhile to socialise the dog with other dogs. I don't know how you'd do that, but to say if you, there was some mechanism to do that, whether that would actually be a healthy thing for the your, you know, your dog um, in terms of oh. when you go out and all that. Because, you know, you obviously when you go out and you walk and your dog comes across another dog, you, it could be a very random type of encounter that occurs from it. Look, this makes me laugh, but I've heard people who take their dogs to doggy daycare, which yeah. is, I think, is laughable anyway. But, <laughs> you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, it's probably pet a owner there's currently, probably, there's, so there's I'm, pro- not, I'm not going to. There's probably, Judge anyone. there's probably an animated film in that, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there is. They take their dogs to doggy daycare and the reason they take their dogs to doggy daycare is because it's good for their dog to socialise with other dogs. Yeah. So there you go. I mean, dogs are people too. I guess they should really have their own bars, mm. their own section at the beach, you know, all of those <laughs> things, you know. Absolutely. Maybe we should Google and see if uh, dogs should be allowed to drive. Certainly, you know, uh automated vehicles maybe there's probably a few <laughs> breeds that would be up to it um, <laughs> um one thing i just wanted to touch on was um doing a study like this in the first place and uh you know they they only the, the sample is only 37 dogs and when you get given the amount of breeds and types and uh that are out there and uh you would think that if you're really serious about doing something along these lines you'd probably need a much larger um sort of uh, oh, yeah. control group um, to be able to pull it off and get any sort of meaningful sort of uh, studies out of it or ideas or findings. Well, yeah, you're right. But I guess the other side of this equation is too is that dogs are like people. Some dogs are just plain stupid and others are very, very bright. Mm. And, um, you know, I think people often forget that, you know, uh, like uh, some mammals like whichever species, you know, some humans are very clever and some are probably not so sharp. So I think dogs are the same and it'd be very hard, be very hard to really get a large sample size and analyse this. As I say, the best study I've, I've seen or, or heard of is, is that one about the domestic dogs barking. Yeah. That was quite interesting. And they compared those barks to a, to a database. But, you know, look, just on that, uh, I think in that article, they had people tweet in or yeah. or post anyway, you know, and there's certainly plenty of people talking to their pets and I can't imagine they'd be talking to their pets if they weren't getting something from it, yeah. either the pet or the, or the human. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> All right, Steve, we might uh, end on that note um, and uh, I guess we'll have to talk about cats at some point then. <laughs> oh, I've got to go and have a chat with my cat about that right now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so don't forget our website, SciTechCulture.com. You can get all of our links and content there. Um, subscribe to our channels, uh, Vimeo, YouTube. We've got our RSS feed so you can uh, listen or watch us um, in a variety of formats and we hope you enjoy the content. All right, so that's it for this episode. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>